Bharat is supposed to be the Vishwaguru, the light of the world. But in all fairness, the term has been abused so much in the mainstream political discourse of India that it has become meaningless. Today, Vishwaguru is a sorry excuse for the lack of agency in Hindu society. As Hindus find their feet after centuries of colonization, they are forced by circumstances to face the consequences of the mass murder and cultural genocide unleashed on them through multiple waves of colonization. With the fabric of Hindu society terribly damaged, their temples, gurukuls and akhadas weakened, Hindus have lost almost all their civilizational institutions and consequently are left with no goals to achieve as a collective. Hindu society is drifting as it were, rudderless and forlorn, at the mercy of external forces. Thus, Vishwaguru has turned into a wishful fantasy of moral superiority of Hindus that is in need of validation from other peoples, who ironically see Hinduism as nothing more than primitive superstition. Indeed, Hindu dharma is primitive superstition in the eyes of the people of the book who have a long history of destroying indigenous cultures all over the world. They had a humiliating term for these indigenous people, pagan. Originally, pagan referred to a civilian as opposed to a soldier. After Christianity, it meant those who were not enlisted in Christ's army, another way of referring to people who had not embraced Christianity. The word pagan became a slur, denoting rustic, backward and primitive. Wherever Christianity and Islam went, they brought with them a trail of mindless violence and fanatical intolerance. In the early few centuries of the millennium, the Christian church destroyed the classical academic institutions along with a staggering amount of pagan art and architecture and burned millions of books. Interestingly, the first blow to the indigenous religion of Arabia came not from Islam, which eventually dominated the region, but from Christianity. Likewise, there is ample archaeological, epigraphic and literary evidence of the large-scale destruction caused to India's native culture by Islamic invaders. Temples, the centers of Hindu cultural life, were demolished in tens of thousands all over India. Hindu men were slaughtered, women and children enslaved and transported to slave markets of Central Asia. As is well known, the Islamic invasion of India was followed by European imperialism, with a very brief gap of Swarajya, that is self-rule, in between. Whereas the Islamic era was characterized by large-scale physical destruction of Hindu culture, the British rule left Hindu society mentally bankrupt and deracinated. It must be said that the track record of these two major monotheistic cults, Christianity and Islam, is far more horrifying outside than it is in India. Clearly, Hinduism survived while the indigenous religions in most other places succumbed to the violence of the two monotheistic cults. While the reason for the same is multi-layered and complex, a very important factor that made Sanatan Dharma resilient was its systemized knowledge systems, its towering intellectual achievements and the advanced culture that flowered from it. In stark contrast with the spread of Christianity and Islam, Dharma spread from India to different parts of the world like China, Japan, Korea, Indonesia, etc. And rather than destroying their native cultures, it elevated them and allowed them to flourish, while assimilating the local deities in the Dharmic pantheon and honoring their sacred geography. On the contrary, the same nations have lost their unique cultural identity under the dominance of the Abrahamic religions and Western civilization. As the world approaches multiple crises, ecological, political and spiritual, it is time for India to rise again and protect the stunning diversity of the biosphere and empower the last remaining indigenous traditions around the world by bringing them under the fold of Dharma. Being a Vishwaguru simply translates to India's duty of spreading Hindu Dharma all over the globe, not for its own sake, but for the well-being of the planet. Dharma must rise to end the tyranny of the fanatical cults that are intent on destroying languages, cultures and biodiversity on the earth. Vishwaguru is not a wishful fantasy. It is a call to action. In Sri Aurobindo's words, when therefore it is said that India shall rise, it is the Sanatan Dharma that shall be great. When it is said that India shall expand and extend herself, it is the Sanatan Dharma that shall expand and extend itself over the world. It is for the Dharma 
and by the dharma that India exists. To magnify the religion means to magnify the country.